Well, the Magic Me project at the Women's Library was the result of wonderful synchronicity, I think, because three things happened at the same time. One of them was that in a meeting at Magic Me, I was asked if I had any ideas for future projects. And it so happened that not long before that, I'd picked up a leaflet about the opening of a new building called the Women's Library, which was going to hold a lot of uh, wonderful resources about women's history in the UK. And then the third thing which made it complete was that I went into the Women's Library and I found the education officer there and had a very preliminary chat with her. But it so happened that they were feeling they were lacking in local connections. They had a national remit, but they didn't feel very bedded in locally. So a proposal which would bring in to the library local women was really interesting for them. And they agreed straight away to try out one project. I come in contact with young Asian girls and we would never, ever have met. And when we all meet together, it's like we're strangers. We don't know anything about each other. We, we look at each other and think, oh, this is going to be fun. And eventually, the time the project is finished, we're almost like families. We think we're such a gap, you know, from 70 upwards and the youngsters 14 years old. What have we got in common? But after we do our projects, we've got so much in common, we can't even believe ourselves. And certain things that we do now, and they're like, oh, I used to do that when I was little. And it makes you think, oh, they're not like how uh, like you would think an older person would be. And you can share like experiences and things that you value, they value as well. The adults learn from the girls, and the girls also learn from us, because they expect a different sort of elder people like walking stick. So when they come and they see us, it's different. And when they start to work with us, we get to like integrate, know each other. And then the session gets better and better all the time. I think one of the reasons that Mulberry commits to this project over such a long time um, is the relationships that the girls create with the women um, really does make a difference in the girls' lives. and. It would boost their confidence, which is something that Mulberry really tries to, to give the girls. I've always been my own person, but I have never had the confidence to say and do the things that I wanted to. But having the project and talking and, and getting confidence of being able to talk in public, I could do that now. It elevates us and we want to come every week. We want. We're looking for the day, we're looking for the day. And when we are there, we are just like family. The older women said immediately, as the project came to an end, what's next? What are we doing next year? And uh, that, that pushed us to do it again. But also the school told us about a way in which girls were learning in a way that they simply didn't learn in school. So there seemed to be quite an impetus behind it. Mulberry is an art specialist school and those kind of creative skills and creative thinking and the kind of things that they do within the project, the way that the project organically grows out of their conversations is a really special thing. Um, and it does contribute to the girls' creativity and their, their kind of, the way they think. Finding a, a piece of territory, a piece of common ground for women of different ages was extraordinarily rich and from the beginning, really, of the project, the young women and the older women talked about things I hadn't heard people talk about in intergenerational work before. When you are in a different place, like the Women's Library, you like, um, it's like a neutral place. It's not like, oh, I'm at school, I have to do, I have to follow rules. You can be open about it. It was great to see that there was a place just that was solely dedicated to the works and the history of women. The place had an atmosphere which was historical because it used to be a wash house many, many years ago. And the people and the things we read in the library, the suffragettes and what they went through, it seemed to give us power. Remember about the Green and Women and how they protest for, to stop the nuclear plants going on. 
and that makes that kind of inspires me because I I've, I've never done anything like that or seen anyone do it, and that kind of makes me think, hey, I want to do that in the future as well, be like part of a women's history. Although I like to think I know about women's history and um, feminism, actually doing this project and seeing the girls hear about people like Mary Wollstonecraft and the Greener Women for the first time, it always it adds something to my understanding because it's much more real. It's not just reading about it in a book, it's seeing it change a young girl's perspective on the world. And that's a really powerful thing. I remember going to the library and looking at the books about the suffragettes. Now, I never voted in my whole life, but when I saw what happened and what the suffragettes did for women's rights, that is now a thing I must do. I remember one quote from Mary Wollstonecraft. She said, um, I do not wish to have power over men, I wish to have power over ourselves. And she was saying that about women. And when she says that, it makes you realise that we don't, when we try to achieve equality for women, it's not saying, oh, we want to be better than them. It's just saying that we want to be in the same level as them and achieve the same thing as. And we have done that so far and we're getting there. I will not be tamed. I will break free. I will not let you be hardened. In one hand, I shall keep you safe. With the other, I will push you forward. At last, we did it. Women are free. We are free. Thank God. The project really taught me that being a feminist isn't about hating men. It's not about hating someone. It's about it's just about wanting equality for everyone, and that that's great. And I think now I will definitely t I won't be ashamed to say that I'm a feminist. I think it's quite I think it's quite a great thing, and everyone should be a feminist. And I think I'm certainly a feminist now. Projects have finished with visual work, filmed work, audio, live performance, a real variety. But about halfway through the project, we began to invite the audience to come and have tea with us at the end. I think actually in this work, some kind of conversation with the makers and a chance to witness the made, they really come together because who the people are who made the work makes it sing more clearly. Those conversations that happen are really valuable um, and that's kind of part of the, the art of the project is the conversations are part of the art and the conversations with, between the girls and the women and the audience in the performance as well um, are part of the art of it. I thought the conversations were beautiful, um, great, great stories um, and just the addressing the similarities between superficially very different, 14 very different people. Um, I, it was magic. Everywhere when you do like normal history, you don't have women's history and it's good to give women that recognition because they have achieved so much and we don't realise that. It's made such a difference to my life, especially in the later years of my life. I feel that if I hadn't done the Magic Me programme, I don't know what I would have done. When I'm with the girls, it just lightened me up because they're all different and they ask different questions, these girls from the women's library. And yeah, I feel at home. Wish you all well and thank you all.
our photographer, our film, our director, our teachers, our everybody. We thank you all. Thank you. I really enjoyed it.